Okay, um, today I just wanted to cover how to work through an intersection um, in modeling a corridor in Civil 3D um, and how we approach the curb returns in that scenario. <clears throat> um, so just to give you a little idea, I've already started on this one, um, but this is just a little subdivision um, and I've already modeled main corridors um, for all the roads um, and so you see we have these little <clears throat> subdivisions coming off of the main road here um, so I went ahead and just I have the center line profile for each of these roads and I've drawn them in and went ahead added regions and set each of these or each of the roads. Now you'll note <clears throat> here as an example basically what you want to do a good way to start is only only go to basically the end of your radius um, for your your curve return area here. That's where you want your interior road or your intersecting road to be um, and in a second I'll show you what, what to do here but essentially what we will do is and you can see this one's got a different region here um, but we want to basically take out this side of the road um, so let's zip back down here um, so I've already done that <clears throat> on the north side here but you can see how we've got our main road coming in and then basically I've set I've split this corridor split the region here and you can see that it's split up to the far curb return, the end of the radius there, and then it starts at the beginning of the radius here <clears throat> on the cell side. And basically I have an assembly that just says do the left side of the road. There's no lane, there's no anything over here. Um, whereas this subdivision road, it's the full, full width, um, but basically starting the region at the end of this curb return radius. Okay, so we've got a big empty spot here. Um, and let me just, so just it's kind of a, a pretty easy process, but it just takes a few steps. Um, so what I've done here, um, so this is going to be my curb here, an eight inch curb, and then a one foot gutter. So the gutter line <clears throat> is actually where my assembly where, where it, it's snapping to the targeting um, width. So I want to offset, I offset this curb line one foot and that's where my gutter is. And right now this is just a polyline. Um, so what I want to do, I'll show you here um, my curb return. And so I've got two, one has a sidewalk in it which I think is the one I'm going to use. <clears throat> but basically you're building an assembly and it's just got your curb and I always start with the fresh assembly and then you add your curb unit here <clears throat> and then you have your sidewalk daylight coming off of that and then you basically add just a small chunk of road um, just coming off of that but basically your snap point is right here the front gutter um, and that will align along that um, polyline that we set and then basically what you're going to do is use this little chunk, this sub-assembly, to snap and target the width and the elevation of your roadway alignments. Okay, so let's go, go back over here. And so right now this yellow line, that's just our polyline. Um, and so what we want to do, an easiest way to do it, is to make this a feature line. Okay, so we can highlight that. We come up here to the feature line. And we're going to create a feature line from objects. And I've got everything lumped into this site. <clears throat> and then whether you want to name them, that's up to you. This is the Red Bud Road. And then I'll put South and Curb Return. And so I just put it as a basic feature line. That's my style preference. And then I have a separate feature line layer that I've created um, that, that I put in there. 
So I wanted to erase existing entities so I don't just have a, a polyline stuck underneath all this. And then I want to assign elevations. So I hit OK. And so if you've created your corridor correctly and you've already set surfaces um, to be automatically rebuilding from that corridor and it's up to date, then you should have, and here I have the MCN, this is my top um, surface. And so that's going to be my corridor surface. And so I hit OK. So now I've got a feature line, and it's a single radius. And ideally, it's gone in and said at this point, so it only has two points. So those are going to be my elevation points. But since it snapped to my corridor here, <clears throat> and these are the same overlapping point, ideally it should have pulled the elevation, basically the gutter elevation, at this end and at this end, because I've already created these. Now we can check that, and you go up here, once it, your feature line's highlighted, you come up to Elevation Editor, um, and here, let's see. Well, it looks like it didn't do it. Um, let's double check whether. So another way to do that, you can highlight these. And you can go elevations from surface. Okay. Okay. So I see. So something else that <laughs> when you draw a polyline, sometimes when you're snapping or offsetting, you got to check the elevation of where that is. So if you're creating a feature line from an object, sometimes your polyline is set to elevation zero. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is see if I can just kind of drag it over real quick and then re-snap it to that point. And see now you can see that it, it set the elevation because it associates it to that actual point. Um, so that's, that's a good error to see. And then we'll reset that. And now we'll double check and we'll go back. But you can see that it, since we snapped to our corridor, that it, it basically set our elevations for us. But we'll still go through that exercise just to verify that that's correct. And you can see here they are in here. But we'll go back and do this again. Okay. So they're essentially right there. Um, so we'll go with that for now just for the example. So sometimes if I had created this polyline a long time before, so it's probably better to, to go ahead and make it from snapping onto the corridor. And so it's already on the same, about the same level. Um, but either way, so what you want to do now is we'll highlight our corridor and we want to add a baseline. And so again, I'm going to name this the Red Bud South Curb Return. And then this is going to be a feature line. Let's say Site 1. And so I don't have many in the drawing yet, so I can just pick from this menu, or you could select it from the screen with that button. Okay. And then one thing here, I always forget to check, but I do want to check now. You want to make sure that your feature line is going the right direction. Um, so way to do that is just check which station is zero. So right here, this station is, is up here is zero, but I actually want this because the way I set it, it's at the right curb. So it's going to be going this way. So I need zero to be down here and then it to be going this way. Um, so what you can do, there's a button here to reverse and it just reverses the direction and the elevations. And so everything will be automatically update. Um, but that's something you'll need to do. So I've already added it as a baseline. Let's go back to the corridor, and now you want to add it as a region. Okay, and then you highlight. It'll just kind of come in and you can select, and then now you need to tell it the stations you want it to, to work through, and then it just draws this little red line. Okay, I'm gonna name it the same thing, just for consistency's sake. South curb return, and so I've got a couple different curb returns here, but I've got one that's it's a six-inch curb, and it's got a sidewalk on the right, which is what I have. 
I hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and set. Um, so basically, you have your daylight surface, which is listed here as just our survey. And then I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, and then I'll show you the rest, walk through the rest. Now this looks pretty ugly right now because we need to increase our frequency. This is a fairly small radius. Um, so if we come up here, we're still highlighting the corridor. So if we can edit frequency, select our area, I'm just going to put it at, say, 5 feet. And that'll tighten that up pretty well. And so now it, it looks a little bit better. So that's up to you how, how tight you want to make it. Um, the frequency. So the next thing we need to do is we want we know it's on the right side which is great because we've got our daylight and we've got it snapping over but we need to bring this basically to even up with our roadways okay with the crown of the roadways so what we need to do is to edit the targets so again come up here highlight your corridor so we want to select this region and so bring this over and so now what we want is our our lane super elevation sub assembly so there's two things we need to set both the width and the elevation i like to set the width first because you'll actually see it come in and you can come in here and this is in civil 2024 if this is looking weird to you um, this is the new <coughs> menu for all of this um, so you can come in and now you can set here there's a list of all the feature line polylines and here are your alignments so this is the main road here sycamore and then we have redbud which was the the side road so i want to rebuild the corridor and i'm just going to hit okay so you can see and now you can see it snapped it tightened up to there but the elevations have not lined up it has just physically drug the corridor out that way at whatever percent it was at it should line up fairly well depending um, but you also need to set the elevation so it's going to be the exact same process um, highlight that region you know deal with the targets and so now it's the same thing and now we want to select the profiles for those two roadways there okay so now you can come in and view if you'd like and of course AutoCAD didn't want to do that right sometimes there and now you can see you can orbit a little bit more and you can see how it works now you'll note here we had those issues with setting the profile and this is one good thing setting the elevations and it kept telling us our target spots were not on the surface you can see it's actually lower down here so we'll need to come in and just manually bring that up um, and so you can do that in the editor or however you want um, So let's see. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Sometimes what I'm going to do here, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to come in and turn that curb return region off. And so we don't see it. But then if you go back to your 3D orbit, 3D view. What I'm going to do is in 3D world, come in and actually move my feature line up to where it needs to be. Um, so that's kind of a handy way. Cause sometimes it, it's hard because even if you set it snapping, this is a straight line um, in your corridor assembly. Okay, so it may not always snap to the top of that. So Let's see if we can go back to our corridor. 
four-door properties. And then, sorry, I didn't show you this earlier. So I basically just unclick this. So now if I hit OK, ideally that should show back up. And now, let's see. Now we should be all lined up. So there you go. Um, so let's go back to our top view. So that's essentially it. Um, and so this works for any intersection. The biggest thing is you want ideally unless you have some reason to do alternatively you want all of this corridor to be one single corridor so you don't want a separate corridor for each roadway you want this to be a single corridor that you can basically keep adding baselines keeping adding regions and build off of okay and that makes everything smooth out completely together um, so that's it and that's just a brief introduction you just want to keep doing that for every single curb return all the way around your your roadways um, which in a subdivision can get pretty hefty but um, that's the process and at least we fixed all the errors but it was good to see them so we can kind of work through some of those issues um, so that's it for today thanks